ladies and gentlemen, we are tuned in to the Rico Report. I really don't know what to tell you. That game was insane. Welcome to the Big Squad. Shout out to the Big Squad. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Big Squad. Welcome on a very special evening to the Rico Report. We are here. He is our team. This is the Buffalo Fanatics. Bing, 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 bing. bing, bing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again, ready to break you off. You know what it is, man. It's the off season. We get a chance to chop it up with some of the Bills players, and I have the honor of uh, speaking to Bills receiver, Mr. Tanner Gentry, Mr. All Colorado Team, Mr. First Team All State in Colorado. That's right, number fifteen recruit out of Colorado, and this guy has four four speed. Don't play. With my guy Tanner Gentry. And let me tell you something. He's quite good friends with our guy, Josh Allen. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me introduce to you Mr. 4 4 Tanner Gentry. What's good? Tanner, what's happening, man? What's going on, man? Appreciate you having me on. All right, man. Listen, man, we're bing biggity bing. We bring you on to the Rico Report. That's how we do, man. We have fun. Um, and, and I'm glad that you took the time out of your day. So I know you had a workout today. Uh did you? Uh, oh, you actually you had a flight or you had a workout? You do a little bit. You're you all over the place, man. What's happening yeah, with man. you? Yeah, man. No, I had a workout this morning. Uh, we you know I had a little vacation last week. Um, went to actually visit Josh for a little bit, and then um, during the weekend we were in in Palm Springs with some of our friends from college. So really good time just to kind of you know recharge, and uh, now I'm ready to crank back up to training. Dude, how much time do you guys actually have to like? to recharge is is it is it you do you give yourself all right i got two weeks three weeks and i'm back to the gym and that's it and we got to get ready for the next season what was what's the timing like yeah i mean i mean it's, i think it's different for for every guy it kind of depends i feel like on you know how long you've been playing there's probably some 10-year guys that give themselves a little bit more time right um but me you know my body feels great um and i i usually only try to give myself a, a couple weeks and uh, i'm ready to get back to it i like it man so listen man Colorado, the Rocky Mountains. I think this, they call it the Rocky Mountains out there, right? Yep. Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. So the air out there, what's it, is it really, does it really take away your breath? Like you can't do certain things where you're like, hold on a second. Let me hold on to something real quick. Like what's it like actually out there? It is. Um, it is definitely a change. Um, you know, when I went to Wyoming, we were actually 70 to 20 feet, which is about 2000 feet higher um than colorado so that was definitely tough and we noticed you know when we had some of our opponents coming in there um they could definitely feel it but uh, i think it's something that helps me training uh, at this altitude um you know especially being a receiver you gotta make sure your conditioning's right so it definitely helps um but it definitely is a little bit harder to breathe out here <laughs> i bet i bet now i'm looking at i'm trying to i'm trying to like get to learn more about tanner gentry so i'm like okay hold on High school star, star, star player out of in Colorado, and I'm looking at like okay, the year that he was coming from high school to college, and I'm looking at who in his draft class. I mean, I wouldn't say draft class, but in his rivals class that we would know that that was coming out the same year. And I'm looking at the guys that were like in the nation. I see like Jalen Ramsey was going from high school to to college. Um, you had uh, Zeke Elliott, Laquan Treadwell was coming out. So you had some competition uh, across the nation. So when you see these names that are playing out, I mean, the other side of the country, and you're like, man, like, I got to, what is it about it that makes you say, okay, I got to get my act together, man, because these guys are getting all the love and I'm all the way in Colorado. What do you do? Or what did you have to do to kind of get your name out there? Um, you talking about in high school? Yeah. 
Yeah, so, um, you know, like, yeah, like you talk about Laquan Treadwell. I remember he was the, the number one receiver in my class. Um, and I just, I remember, you know, I felt like I had a, a really, really good junior and senior year. Um, and the offers just didn't show for it. I went to a few camps um, and, and did really well, but I only ended up pulling, you know, a Wyoming offer and, an Air Force uh, offer, which I told them that there's no chance I can <laughs> join the Air Force Academy. So, um, you know, it was it was definitely tough. I feel like Colorado high school football, um, it's, it's getting there as far as it's, you know, uh, being able to recognize the talent out here because, I you know, I coach some kids out here too um, okay. in the off season, and we got some good players out here because, uh, you know, when you, most, most people think um, Texas, Florida, California got all the good high school players, but Colorado got some good players too. Um, so yeah, it was just, you know, for me, I was just thankful to even get a scholarship. I wasn't too concerned on, you know, getting my name out there or being nationally known in high school or anything like that. I just wanted that D1 scholarship and that was my main goal since I was a kid. So I just wanted somewhere to, you know, have a chance to go play and, um, somewhere to go compete. So knowing that you're going to call it, you're going to Wyoming, did you know who, like being recruited there, did you know who was going to be your quarterback before going there? No, I didn't. We actually, when I was about to go there, we had a um, a kid named Brett Smith. He started as a true freshman, um, and he was he was a pretty good player. He played uh, for the, I think he was with the Tampa Bay Bucks for a little bit. Um, but I, I was, you know, I was excited about that. It was a, a really heavy throwing offense, played like five receivers at a time. You know, we spread okay. it out. So yes. I felt like I had a really good chance to, you know, get in there right away and um, make some plays. But um, what's a crazy story, I actually had four different quarterbacks every single year. I had a different QB in college. Gee. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it so, was, that was definitely tough, but. So you, you get to Wyoming and I mean, you're already kind of used to the atmosphere, the, the temperatures and all that stuff. So now uh, you're a high school kid going to college, right? First year, uh, modest second year. Um, I believe uh, you start to get your, 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 your bearings wet. And then, there's the injury. What take us through that injury and what kind of took you like you were you were you were getting hot and then boom, you get injured. What what was going through your mind at that time? Yeah, it was tough. Like you said, you know, my first two years were a little bit slow. I was sharing uh, sharing time with some guys and my junior year. It was really time for me to, you know, be the guy, be the number one guy. And I felt like I was really breaking out, um, you know, was was at the tops and receiving before the injury. And it was just unfortunate. Um, you know, I'm just diving for a ball, which was a, a pretty tough catch to make, you know, kind of on the sideline. And I, I reached out for it and um, the, the DB let, kind of landed on me and it had separated my, my AC joint on my shoulder pretty bad, mm -hmm. um, which was actually like a grade three. And that put me out for um, the last six games of the season. So, that was a bummer, um, you know, and Josh actually got hurt that same year, too. Um, he right. had the collarbone, so he we he wasn't starting that year. We had a different guy, um, Cameron Kaufman, started off the season. He got hurt, and Josh came in, and then Josh had broke his collarbone. So Josh and I were both out for that the rest of that year, and I think that's kind of when we started to get the closest. Um, that's we were what both I down. To get yeah. We were both down, and, um, you know, we were watching our team kind of struggle out there, to be honest, <laughs> um, and – we just, you know, tried to stick together. And that, that, that was that off season where we got really close and started putting the work in together, you know, knowing he was going to be the guy the next season. So. So what is it about? And, and this is one of the questions that uh, one of the Bing squad members wanted to ask. What is it about the 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 chemistry between receiver and quarterback and and what makes them gel? Is it the off the field friendship that allows you guys to just know each other? Or is it just a football thing, man? I just know what you're doing. You know what I'm doing. Or is it a combination of both? Like, what is it about that gets you that chemistry, especially you and Josh in that offseason? Yeah, it's definitely both, man. Um, I think the, the amount of time we spent together uh, off the field definitely built our, our friendship up. And, uh, you know, it just kind of it gave us a sense of trust for each other. And, um, you know, we were out there playing for our brother, playing for one another. And, um, as far as on the field goes, I think between a receiver and a quarterback, it all just comes down to trust. Um, if the if the quarterback trusts that, you know, no matter what happens, if he puts it up there, that you're going to come down with it and the DB is not, 
um, that that's where really where it all starts. You know, he trusts you to make plays um, and you back it up by making the plays. He's going to keep coming to you. So, you know, that's just kind of kind of how that went. And it, it was definitely a combination of both, uh, both, of you know, us being really good friends off the field and um, us being able to create that chemistry on the field as well. See, that's amazing because Josh, Josh gives me that that vibe of like, yo, anybody can get along with this guy. This guy, there's not, there's no judgment in his body. He could just chop it up with you no matter who you are, no matter what you, where you come from, you guys will get along just fine. So getting into your now senior season, 2016, y'all went bananas, especially you. Over 70 catches, 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns. Dude, you were catching long bombs all day. 4-4 four, four speed. Growing up, who what receiver did you model your game after? I'm curious to know what that is. Uh, Des Bryant is my my all time favorite receiver. Still is. Um, you know, I, I, will, I watch a lot of him. There's something about when I would watch him play. Um, you know, no matter if he was open or not, he was a great route is a great route runner. Uh, very physical, but. If the guy was covered, um, there was nobody stopping him from going up to get the ball. So ever since I started playing receiver and, you know, my dad, he played receiver uh, in college as well. And he had preached this to me at a young age that when the ball is in the air, it's yours no matter what. So I think that's it's definitely a mentality thing. And, um, you know, I, I feel like I have pretty good ball skills. So I was I was blessed with that. And, you know, I just I just have that mentality that uh, I'm, I'm always attacking the football no matter what. So. Definitely Des, man. He's made some cra crazy catches. Des um, so, Bryant. Yeah. Yeah, so he's that you're, dude, telling me, man. you're telling me that in that playoff game, he caught that ball on the sideline. Yeah, that was a catch. Come on now. <laughs> that was a catch. That one. Yeah. They call it a catch nowadays. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I, yeah, I noticed sure. you, you get in the end zone, but you never gave one of these. I know. I I'm not big into the, you know, this, the, the flashy celebrations, but I, I definitely, you know, my first touchdown in the league, when I come back, I'm definitely have to pay some homage to him. So I, I, I will tell you this though, Josh Allen is like the king of, of handshakes and celebrations and all that. He's not going to allow you to get score a touchdown and walk off to the sideline. No, y'all are going to be doing some kind of whatever it is that he's been doing. I don't know how this guy, he's got like a handshake with every single guy on that squad, which is, which is super is amazing. So now senior season's over with, you have a monster senior year. What is it exactly now? Now that you're okay, so what's my next move? I I'm, I gotta go to the league. What are the, the what is your? I mean, obviously you got an agent or or or, or some kind of counsel. What are they telling you of as to where maybe you'll get drafted? What's the what's the what's what was the rumblings going around uh, going into the draft year? Yeah, so I mean, I finished. I think I finished uh, number 10 in receiving in, in FBS my senior year. And so I felt like I've set myself up uh, pretty good for the draft process. And, you know, I hired my agent, went through that whole th whole process of, you know, finding which agent I want, I want to ride with. And um, after that, uh, I didn't get an invite to the combine, which we were kind of waiting on that. And I didn't. And I was a little disappointed, to be honest, but um, it didn't really phase me. I just kept working. And got ready for my pro day and um, felt like I had a pretty good day and got some pretty good feedback from scouts and, and whatnot. And kind of after that, uh, you know, my agent was talking to me, kind of feeling like I was a, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. I got, a, you know, who knows? They, they tell you all these things and right. um, just kind of the draft is a crazy thing, man, because you could, you know, be on someone's board high and, um, you know, they end up having to change a thought or a player that they really want gets taken. So they go in a different direction, you know, position wise. Um, but I don't know. It was just they were just telling me that, you know, they my agent was pretty confident no matter what happened, I was going to get a shot to be, you know, in a rookie mini camp or get an undrafted contract or something. So um, I was just patient. I had, you know, my whole family with me that day during the draft and was just kind of waiting to see what happened. But, um, yeah, that, that's about it. That, I mean, because I always say that that got to be incredibly hard because you work your tail off and you, people are telling you left, right, center that you might go here. You might do this. And were you getting your hopes up or were you just an even keel? Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, well, I mean, growing up as a kid, you know, you watch the draft every year and you dream of, you know, seeing your name go across that screen. And um, I was actually, you know, I had like I said, I had my whole family there. And um, as the draft kind of went on, I, you know, I was. Um, talking to my agent the whole time, and then um, I think they like, had done a little segment um, about Josh on there. They were talking about 
um, I don't know, they, they were talking about like the next year's quarterbacks or something. And then they had right. brought me up and we're talking about, you know, I could see this guy being taken off the board in the late rounds here, whatever. So I'm kind of getting a little excited. I'm thinking that they I might get picked. Yeah. I'm like, damn, I might get picked here. But, um, you know, I was, I was a little disappointed. Um, but honestly it was, it was pretty motivating. I, I've been doubted my whole life, man. Like coming out of high school, um, you know, seeing what little schools were interested in me, um, I just keep that chip on my shoulder no matter what. So, um, yeah, I was, it was disappointing, but motivating to say the least. It was man. Sometimes it, it's all about it's all about needing that little motivation, that little chip uh, to push you forward. So now draft goes by. Now before we get to you, you're watching your old teammate, right, get drafted. So I'm sitting here. I'm like, okay, because as a Bills fan, I'm like, hold on a second. Who are we taking? There's a whole bunch of quarterbacks. Mitch Trubisky is there. You know very, very much about Mr. Trubisky. So you see your teammate get drafted number seven. What's going through your mind uh, when when you see, okay, hold on a second. Did he just get drafted? No kidding. Seven to the Bills? What's going? So what are you seeing this? Are you like shocked or are you like, man, I knew this was going to happen? If I'm being honest, I was shocked that he didn't go first. Oh shit! Talk, say it with your chest now. Oh, man. I need to hear this. I was this. mad he didn't go first for real. I know he was mad too, but um, you know, I thought he was no no doubt in my mind the best quarterback in that draft class. Um, and uh, you know, I was just when when he got passed up early and then uh, found Buffalo at seven. I was so happy for him, man. Just you know, it, it seemed like a true fit for him. Uh, I know I talked to him after. I know he was super happy about it. Um, but yeah, just. Super excited for my guy, man, because, you know, same thing. Um, he was doubted, too, and he went to a junior college, and Wyoming was the only school that, you know, wanted to take him from the junior college. So he had that chip on his shoulder, too, and he worked his ass off. And, um, you know, he's just just a great teammate, great friend. Um, and so I was just super, super happy for him. That's amazing, man, because when you have your teammate, you play with him, and you see you know, his dream come true. You, you can't help but be happy, but you're like, yo, I got to grind my butt off now. I got to do it. So now you're with the Bears and you're with Mitch Trubisky, right? <laughs> so tell me about your time with the Bears now. And, I, and I'm, I'm curious because I want to know what was the big, the big eye opener for you from going from Wyoming football to now NFL football with the Bears? Yeah, um, just the biggest eye opener was you know, that everybody is super good. It is, it is the NFL. Um, you know, the talent level is at an all time high all across the field. Um, and you know, Wyoming, we had some really good players. I feel like, you know, our conference, we had Boise state, San Diego state, right. um, tons of dudes that went to the league out of our conference, but, um, it's different, you know, when you get there and, and everybody's super good and especially the DBs, um, that was one of the biggest things, you know, just ev how, how, super athletic all these guys were um, right. you know, just really as a receiver it really forces you to you know develop that creativity in your route running and how to create separation because you know just because you're fast doesn't mean you're going to go um, against these really fast dbs so um, you know in wyoming i was honestly able to get away with that sometimes and uh you know just use my athleticism so that was definitely the main thing um, when i got to chicago but as far as that experience, I, I enjoyed it, man. I really loved it. Um, it was it was a great experience for me. Great um, step in my journey. Learned a lot of things. Um, you met a lot of great people. So, I gotta ask you this, and, and I'm curious about it because, you mean you you majority I'd say majority of uh, of the guys in the league are are the black receivers, right? And Tanner Judge is coming out of Wyoming, and you're reading all these scout the scouting reports on you. What were the things that you were reading? You're like, oh, come on, man. That's not me. I'm I'm better. <laughs> like, what were the things that you were seeing on there? You're like, come on. Like, nah, that, man, that's not, that can't be right. You know, I've heard it all, man. <laughs> Possession receiver, uh, you know, deceptively fast, uh, not athletic. I've heard it all, man. I've heard it all. Well, does that kill you? Coach's son. He's a really go-getter. Yo, yeah, <laughs> hard worker. <laughs> He's a gym rat. He gets in the gym. Yeah, all gym that. rat. <laughs> Sam, you're like, I can it's run a, just after these guys. Man, it's hilarious. I mean, honestly, the funniest comparison I've ever got, like when I came out, everybody was saying like, oh, my gosh, he's the next Wes Welker. And I'm sitting here like, we're not even like, 
Fam, truck what oh, I tell you. It's just I'm, funny. Like he's a five eight point. slot, and I'm not. It's just funny. Right. Six six one almost six one yeah. six two four four forty exactly. outside receiver, and you're gonna give me Wes Welker. <laughs> I know. God. No, yeah, it is. It is what it is, man. I and I had to ask that because, like, a lot of a lot of these are a white running back or a white receiver will get pigeonholed with all the other white receivers. Like, yo, I can play, I can run just as fast as these guys. I I can go and get a contested catches. That's what I do. You did not see me. You know, in 2016, balling out of control. Anyways, I had to get that out there because I was always curious to to find out what it is that like scouting reports and what they were saying. You're like, come yeah, on, play that yeah. receiver. You know, and, I and play. I, yeah. Oh yeah, I've heard all of it. And yeah, honestly, I, like the main thing I, I heard that knock on me was like coming out of Wyoming was I didn't, you know, play against good enough talent and you know couldn't make plays against NFL caliber guys. So <laughs> right. And then and then you showed them. You showed them because yeah. I, I saw I saw some footage when you're playing with the Bears, man. They did not think that you could roll. You got some you got some speed on you, boy. And I gotta give mm -hmm. it to you now. So here's the here's the tough part because now you're you're activated to the roster, cut activated back to the roster cut back and forth like a yo-yo and i'm i'm sure that's giving you experience at the same time but like man just let me just stick give me an opportunity then you go to the xfl what was that like that i mean that was that was a cool experience i met you know a lot of good dudes out there um a lot of guys you know that are just fighting for a chance to keep playing fighting for a chance to get back um you know i was just really excited to to go play um, you know, after I got released from the Bears and um, hadn't got picked up that NFL season. So I wanted to, you know, I still had a lot left in the tank. So I wanted to go play in that league um, and, and had got drafted to it and had a super unfortunate injury um, right before the season started, actually a uh, pretty high ankle sprain that put me out for about six weeks. So I wasn't able to play that whole season. And the week I come back, they put me right in the, I'm about to be, so, you know, playing that week, they put me in the lineup. I'm playing, and that Friday they like shut the league down for COVID. <laughs> Dude, I was man. like, bro, you, this is crazy. <laughs> and, and that's the thing, man. And sometimes it's it's just the way the cookie crumbles, man. Like yeah, you're like, yo, I'm ready to go. I'm healed yep. up, and it and it gets that way. So you have NFL experience with with the Bears. You do a couple years. I what it was a couple years with the Bears. Uh, or so yeah. just a year. Yeah, I was like two. I was two full seasons um, on the roster, and then I went. I was there for like that third off season in training camp, right. and that's when they released. Right. Me. Yep. Okay, and then you you go with the XFL, and now you get a you get you get brought on by the Bills. Now, how did that materialize? Are you reaching out to them? Are they reaching out to you? How did that materialize for you to be to be associated with the Bills? Um, you know, I me personally hadn't reached out to anybody. Um, you know, I know my agent had been working this whole time to, to get me an opportunity, um, somewhere. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough business, man. It's hard. Um, there's a lot of guys that are, you know, out of league trying to get back. Um, so it's definitely hard, hard to get back in. And, you know, you're, you're I, I know Josh, you know, had a little bit to do with it, kind of pulling for me, um, you know, just to get me in the door, give me an opportunity, but, um, you know, the fact that they brought me on and, and just gave me a chance to even get in the door and show what I could do, uh, it really means the world to me. And, uh, you know, I'm ready to make the most of it, man. You're freaking right, man. That's your boy. You're supposed yes, to hold it down for your boys, man. And I've oh, always no. said this. I always see it. You you hear all these, like, okay, for this, this, the Sean Watson situation, right? He felt he was disrespected, this, that, and the third, and now it's a whole big mess over there. I always say quarterback especially your franchise quarterback should always have a small say on how certain things go and if he says hey get my boy tanner i'm gonna tell you right now he, he gonna ball out and the fact that you you now got yourself a futures contract man we hoping for the best man i need them to not see Wes welker i need them to see that boy tanner gentry can run and yes, not a sir. slot although you can play slot so which do you prefer now that you've done a little bit of both in the nfl slot inside Where's your natural position? Um, I don't know, man. I I felt like I I felt like I was I am better in the slot after you know when I I, I played I played all around in college just because they kind of moved me around um, trying to put me in spots. But you know when I got to to Chicago my first year I was mostly playing outside. Um, and then second year when Coach Nagy's staff came in, um, that's when I moved to the slot some too, and I was playing both in. 
Um, I liked, I, I think I was, I did a pretty good job in the slot just because, you know, you see guys like Larry Fitzgerald too, like they, they'll put him in the slot because it's a, it's a mismatch problem. And if you know, Absolutely. if you can get a bigger guy in the slot that can run too and, you know, make those contested catches at the same time, um, you know, I feel like that's, that's pretty beneficial. So I like playing them both, man. I just, I just like to be on the field making plays. <laughs> I, I'm with you, man. So now you spent a little time with the Bills, right? So you're a boy. J.A., Josh Allen, the franchise of Buffalo. The man is the king of the city. That boy owns that city. It's, it's a wrap. It's over with. So you're on the Bills roster now, right? You're mingling with the guys and so on and so forth. And, and this is a question a lot of, like, the Bing Squad members want to know this. I mean, a lot of Bills fans, especially you, because people want to, to know this. And, and you're the best person that I think we could, that can get the answer from. What have you seen as the big difference between Josh Allen in Wyoming and what he was like in Wyoming to Josh Allen right now? Nothing. He's the same dude. Nice. Same, same fearless leader, um, you know, always making jokes with the guys, never too serious. Um, he, he hasn't changed, man, like, and he shouldn't because that's what makes him who he is. Um, you know, obviously elite level talent, but, you know, for him to be able to get a whole locker room behind him and you know he's obviously a lot younger than a ton of those guys in that locker room too um but it, the instant you get in that locker room you can tell that all these dudes are ready to ride for him man because yeah. it's the same way in college like that's why you know your quarterback that's the biggest intangible in my opinion that you can have is you know that that leadership and you know just having guys want to go run through a wall for you because you know, guys will play harder for, you know, a quarterback that they believe in. So, you know, I didn't see much in how he changed. He was still doing all the goofy stuff, you know, messing yep. around with the guys. So, which is good, man, because he definitely loves what he does. And um, that's, that's what makes him who he is. So, I, I, I mean, I respect the hell out of that because a lot of times some people kind of switch up. You know what I'm saying? They're, right. they're you know I mean, new number who this, right? Yep. And he kept it real the whole time so that's exactly why people gravitate towards josh allen man they just love the dude man he's just that guy so here's the deal mr tanner gentry mr aka 4440 speed get out get out to the corner i like you know what i mean I, i'm not gonna let that go because i've seen the wheels man you you can yeah. go so oh yeah we're gonna play a game called two words all right i kind of gave you an idea of how this game is played but i didn't tell you what i was gonna throw your way so I want you to brace yourself. I want you to collect yourself because uh, it, it's coming your way. <laughs> it's coming your way. So let, let us get into it. And I'm going to just get you warmed up. So after this little, little segue, we're going to get right into it. All right. Here we go. Tanner Gentry. We got him. It's, it's time. It's time to get to the segment of called Two Words. Here's the deal. It's very simple. I name something. You give me the first two words that come to your mind. If it's something a little tough, you can stand on it if you'd like to. Are you ready, sir? Let's do it. Here we go. XFL experience. Uh, pretty shitty. <laughs> Yo, keep it real. I like it. I like it. Okay, here we go. Injuries. Injuries. I get that. Okay. The 2017 draft, what were your, your agents saying to you? Get a chance. Get a chance. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Ready? Um, seeing Josh Allen drafted. Pure joy. Pure joy. I like that. Josh Allen, Wyoming. Game changer. Josh Allen, Buffalo. Face the franchise. Okay, okay. You do well <laughs> you so far. You well so far. <laughs> yeah, but you do well so far. Here we go. Ready? Um, Stefan Diggs. Elite talent. Oh she. Okay, here we go. Bill's training facility. Top notch. Yes. Compared to Chicago. Way nicer. Got it. Here we go. Favorite place to eat? Chipotle. 
Next oh, okay. <laughs> grill. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, here we go. Playoff Bills. Super Bowl. Nice. Coach McDermott. Love him. Dawson Knox. Great hair. <laughs> here we go. Here's the last one. Here's the last one. And all Bills fans typically want to know this. I think it's lame as heck, but they want to know this. When you eat your wings, is it blue cheese or ranch? I already know I can't say ranch, but I can't eat blue cheese. It's ranch. It's ranch. Listen, man, some people have their taste. It's ranch. You might made you might have made some enemies, but it's I know all the good. buffalo, the real buffalo people will kill for that blue cheese, man. I'm telling you, man, they, there's something about that blue cheese that they just love so damn much. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Uh, ladies right. and gentlemen, we are with receiver Tanner Gentry, former Bear, former Wyoming Cow Wyoming Cowboy, and now a Buffalo Bill. Now, you are now you you received your futures contract. When you get that futures contract, what what does it do anything for you? Are you like that's just that's just an opportunity? Like how do you how do you take that futures contract with the Bills? Yeah, man. Basically, just you know another opportunity. Um, you know they're giving me a chance to come compete for a job next year, come compete for a spot. Um, and you know I'm not I'm not I'm never felt entitled to anything, so I'm gonna go out there and earn everything. And uh, I'm I'm super excited about it. How excited are you about playing with Josh Allen again? Where do you do you feel like you need to do anything different uh, to to really stand out? No, I definitely don't think I need to do anything different. Um, you know, just keep working, keep working on my game, and um, just do what I do on the field. But um, I'm I'm super excited. You know, when I got when I got there um, back in December, uh, I was you know just seeing him in the locker room was crazy. Um, just, just, you know, being on the field with him again, it was awesome. And, uh, I'm excited about this next year and, you know, the bills is a great organization and, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of positive things are, are happening there. So I'm definitely excited to be a part of it. I, I will say this, man, this is the year of cap casualty. There's some guys that are going to be let go and guys that are, are having lesser deals or not as much in the bank. Are going to have their opportunities so this is where mr gentry can come in and sneak in and just shock a lot of people you know your talent so does josh allen so is there is there ways that you have spoken to josh and be like yo fam you see me you know we you know what we do hook me up are there any <laughs> conversations like that uh you know he, he already knows uh you know you don't need much conversation about that but kind of the main thing for me is you know I know I'm sure some people are thinking that, you know, Josh was helping me get in there, which which is true. But for from here on out, you know, I want everything that ha that happens for me. I want to be earn everything that, that comes my way, um, you know, so I'm trying to, you know, create my own legacy. Uh, you know, I the how you know, my career little uh, stint went in Chicago. Um, obviously, I got a lot of motivation coming from there. Um, you know, I didn't really feel like I got the chance to to show what I really can do um, as a receiver in this league. So, um, you know, I'm definitely, definitely ready to earn everything, everything this year. You're damn right. I, I got to ask this though. You, with the short time that you have been with the Bills, you, you tend to, to gravitate towards certain players. Who have you gravitated towards the most? Like who's like your best buddy on the team? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was definitely a short little stint, but um, uh, you know, all the all the guys in the wideout room are great dudes. Um, you know, I got to got the chance to hang out with Cole uh, a couple times off the field too. Um, he was he was a really good dude. You know, just all these guys are, uh, you know, they're awesome. They they welcomed me with with open arms and were were great to me from day one. So I'm pretty thankful for it. Was there one receiver where where they're kind of like more like you know what I mean? I'm, you're my little brother, man. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Like, who was that one guy that was like, "Yo, come with me, man, and let me show you what's good." Yeah, I mean, a little bit. You know, Steph was definitely helping me out. Um, you know, he would he would bring me to the side and give me some pointers here and there, which I really appreciate. You know, he's a top receiver in in this league, and um, I'll take any advice I can get from him. And um, you know, definitely all those guys were definitely helping me since I came in late. You know, trying to learn everything. Um, so it was definitely a positive experience, and and there's some great guys. I like that. So listen, man, we're coming right to the end of our interview, man. You've been real dope, man. You've been real dope. And I'm hoping yeah. that uh, that uh, that 
these Bills fans start to get to know who Tanner is, right? Instead of these cookie cutter type of interviews, man, I, they want to know who you are. So I've got another segment. It's called Say It With Your Chest, right? They need to know who Tanner Gentry is. What is Tanner Gentry going to bring to the Bills? What do what do Bills fans need to know? What should they look out for, right? I'm going to give you time to collect yourself because this segment here, you don't you don't say it quiet. You say it with your chest. Let's go. You got it. The floor is yours. Let's go. All right, Bill fans, you're about to get a dude who competes every single play. I'm going to make plays. I'm going to be a great teammate. You know, I'm going to fight hard, and we're going to do everything we can to bring a championship to Buffalo. Hey. Listen, he's a, he's a man of few words, but let me tell you, man, if he's even, he might be leaving. But now this is the NFL. They're not just going to let you just cake walk around, man. So we got Trey White on this team. We got Dane Jackson on this team, and we got some dogs. But I have a feeling, I have a good feeling about Tanner, man. I'm hoping that you get the every opportunity you get uh, to get onto this. This is a passing team. So this is where you have the most uh the most um i guess opportunity to do it so i hope you nail everything i hope you stay healthy and uh then we're looking for a big year man i'm hoping fans are back in the stands get that true buffalo feel tanner you've been nothing but great i appreciate your time because time is money man and uh, and you gave it to us so i appreciate you very much uh listen ladies and gentlemen this is tanner gentry uh receiver for the buffalo bills and uh, we're looking for a big year for our guys. So I'm hoping you get on that damn field and show us what you got, that Wyoming connection. I'm hoping that we can see a little something like that. So I appreciate your time, man. Listen, anytime that you want to jump on, you know what it is, man. It's Rico. It's the Rico Reports, the Buffalo Fanatics. And it's your boy. And we are gone. Ladies and gentlemen, we are tuned in to the Rico Report. That game was insane. Welcome to the big squad. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the big squad. Welcome on a very special evening to the Rico Report. We are here. This is the Buffalo Fanatics. Bing, 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 bing. bing. <laughs>